Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the last video in Going 2D. Today we are going to export our game uh, after just a few fixes and changes here and there. And uh, I'm going to basically show you how to export it both to uh, the web and to a standalone that basically means uh, Linux, Windows and Mac. Cool, so before we get started today, I just quickly want to talk about why it's taking me so long to put out a video. Um, I'm sorry, but I've been sick. Um, I'm, I hope you can't hear it on my voice anymore, nothing serious, but that, that has slowed things down. And more importantly, I've been working on 10-hour games. So as you see the wallpaper here, I participated in the event I'm hosting called 10-hour games. And basically what it is is it's not a competition, but a way for people to get cracking on whatever game they want to make. So it's more of a concept or a challenge, if you will. So uh, a lot of cool people have already entered some games, but I'm going to keep the event going for a long, in, uh, for, for a long time. And uh, I would like to see more. Um, there, there are room for many, many more creations. So please go to brackish.com slash... 10 hour games to watch the video and, and read about it. It's really awesome. And uh, I am looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Cool. So now let's get started with today's video. So as always, I've opened up Unity. And if we go in here, there's just a quick fix I want to do. And that's uh, whenever you play on full screen, uh, the ball has quite a bit of space to travel on and so I think the game just becomes a little bit too easy. So what I want to do is I want to select the player prefab down here. So I will change for them both at the same time. And I want to bump down, down the wire scale to something like 0 0.8 just to make the players a bit smaller and so it will be harder for them to hit the ball. Cool, so that was just a, a quick gameplay fix. Of course, that's something you should play around with to get it working for your game. Awesome. So now we're going to go to File. Uh, no, yeah, File, and then Build Settings, or press Control shift b We're not ready to build and run yet. So in here, we can first off make sure that we have added our scenes to the build. I've already added the main level here. So if not, it will just be blank and you can hit add current and it will add the scene so that it will load up when you build the game. Uh, then you can see currently we have PC, Mac and Linux standalone selected. If you want to select something else like the web player, just sim uh, simply select and hit it and hit switch platform and then Unity will re-import things and rearrange it so it works for that platform. But let's do PC, Mac and Linux first. So first off, let's uh, select the target platform. I'm just going to show you how to do this on Windows. And then the architecture, you can choose between uh, 86 and 64 and 86 basically means 32. So I'm on a 64-bit uh, system. So I'm going to export to that. And if you are doing a development build, meaning that this is not the final export or not something that you're going to roll out to customers, you can select that and it will basically say it uh, in the corner that it's a development build. Uh, also, let's hit player settings to change some things in the inspector. Uh, first off, we make sure that you're under the standalone tab. And let's first change the company name, uh, or that could be just your name if you don't have a company. Uh, but I'm just going to do Brackies here. And the product name is going to be Pong uh, Tutorial. Then the default icon, I've gone ahead and created a very simple, and again, very simple icon for this game. You feel free to use it if you want. So that's, of course, in the assets pack. Uh, so if you go to brackies.com, you can download it. Uh, you can download it there. And by the way, I've made the uh, site much faster now. I've done a bunch of, of optimizations, so it should just work really nicely. Uh, but I'm just going to find it on my local hard drive here on the 2D assets pack under Pong and Icon here. So again, very simple, but it works. So let's drag this into the Unity editor, uh, drag it into the project pane. 
and then uh, select it. Make sure to select GUI and hit apply. Try again there. And then go back to the player settings and we can set it as the default icon. So let's just drag it in there. The default cursor, we're going to leave that. And the same with the cursor hotspot. Now, in the resolution and presentation, because this is such a casual game, I want to change the default is full screen to off. So that, um, I mean, the game just simply doesn't require a full screen. You can do stuff while you're playing and such. So I think it's better if it's just windowed by default. The default screen width and height, in, that's in, in pixels. Um, I'm just going to leave that. I think that's quite fine. And uh, the rest of this we can pretty much leave. I mean, the icon is, is fine. Uh, the splash image, we're not going to mess with that. The other render settings are for more advanced stuff. So we're just going to leave everything. And now we are ready to build our game. So simply hit build. And then we can select the destination. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to call this Pong Tutorial Build. And then it's always good to do a version number. So I'll just do uh, version. Let's do 0, 01. Then we hit save. And it's going to just make sure that you save an, an, as an exe, uh, not in all files. And hit save. So now Unity is going to go ahead and build out our game. And it's just going to take a quick moment. And now we're done. So now on our desktop, we should have a uh, first off an exe file with the icon. I know it's not pretty. And a uh, folder called the icon name and then underscore data. And this is where many people get confused. Um, because, I mean, they think that whenever they build, they just get an install file and you can go through the installation and then there's a shortcut on your desktop and all that good stuff. But that's not really true. I mean, Unity builds it out as a standalone. But that doesn't mean that it, you have an uh, installation yet. So what we have here is an exe file with some data. And we can now run the game, uh, as you can see, and we can select everything just how we want it. Uh, actually, the graphics quality, well, that's really annoying. Right now, the graphics quality, you have all uh, kinds of settings. And I don't really think that's required. So let's just go back into Unity. And this is why we put version numbers in there. <laughs> so uh, let's go back into Unity. Let's go under the product settings, quality. And in here, we can delete some of all those um, uh, graphic settings So because we don't really need this much. Uh, so let's delete everything but good, actually. So let's just delete that and that, 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 and that. So we only have good. And uh, we can just set that as default for all the different platforms, if you wanna. I'm just gonna clean it, clean it up there. And then we're gonna say uh, standard. Or if you're uh, feeling cocky, you can do awesome. I'm just gonna do standard. And then the pixel light count, that doesn't really matter. We're in a 2D game. Uh, we don't have any lights, so we'll just leave it. Full res, sounds good. Per texture um, is fine. Anti-aliasing, we're not going to do any of that. And uh, yeah, basically just leave all the settings here. So now we should be good to go. Uh, so if we go ahead and build uh, the game once more, so go in here and hit build. And we're going to just do, let's just overwrite this. So yeah. And it's going to go ahead and build the game one more time. And there we are. So now if we go in here and we double click on this, we can see that we only have one graphics level and that's the standard. Uh, you can go ahead and customize this uh, configuration thing. I'm not going to go into that. This is just the easy way and, and it works. I mean, I've never heard anyone complain about the launcher. So let's hit play. And you can see that our game launches. It says powered by Unity. Some people ask how to get that away. You have to buy Unity Pro in order to scratch that. And we can see that this is working just how we wanted. And we can hit reset and uh, everything should be working. Yeah, it is. Cool. So now let's close that down. And uh, we can go ahead 
and talk a little bit about how to make this into an installable. So for that you will need an, uh, a dedicated program and there are free programs out there but most of them have limitations so just go ahead and find the one right for you. Um, there's one called, uh, what's, what is it? Actual installer. I've used this once for kill pill. It's quite all right. I mean, it the easy version does what is 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 needed, um, but there are many alternatives to this. Just check it out. Search for it. Search for make installable Unity, and you will get plenty of comparisons and all that um, to to pick which one is right for you. And and it, it's pretty easy. You just select the um, the exe file and the data, and it will make everything for you. So. That's something you want to consider if you want to deploy to many systems. Awesome, so that was it for the standalone version. Now let's go ahead and do the web player. So let's say switch platform. And let's just check out the player settings uh, to make sure everything is okay. And in here we can do a default screen width and height. I think this is okay, it's in the smaller size, but that's all right. And uh, I'm just going to leave the default template here as white. And the icon, we are not going to change any of this. So that is pretty much fine. And we can go ahead and build again. So hit build. And let's go uh, to the desktop here. And let's make a new folder for this called uh, Pong Web uh, Build. And inside of this, yeah, we can select folder and it will start building. So we'll just wait for it to finish. Awesome. So now on our desktop, we have a folder called Pong Web Build. And inside of this, we again have two files. One is the HTML file. This stores all the information about how the Unity uh, web player is integrated into uh, your browser. So in here you can change uh, how it looks, uh, what the title of the uh, web player is, all of that. So if you have a, a program like um, uh, Notepad++ or any other, other code editor, you can go in and, and uh, change things around with this file. Uh, then we have the Unity 3D, which basically stores all of the game information. So this is the game itself, and it's what you would upload if you want to upload to a site like Congregate and don't want to host it yourself. So here comes a, again a, bu a bunch of inf information. There are basically three ways of getting your, um, what well, there is for, ways of getting your web player out there. So either you can build it like this, and then maybe... Uh, turn this into a uh, raw file and then upload it so people can download it. And then they will have to just uh, run both files. But that would be stupid because then you can just use the normal uh, standalone file. So instead you want this somehow uploaded to the internet so that people can play it in their browser without downloading anything except the Unity plugin. Um, and you can do that um, three ways. You can do that either using Dropbox, which is a pretty cool uh, feature that I'm going to show you, and that's what we're going to do in this video. Or if you have a website that you host yourself, there are guides on the internet. It's not exactly easy. There are often complications, but there are plugins to help you and plenty of guides. So just search um, embed Unity web player game or something and, and there will be plenty of guides there. And then uh, lastly, there is the um, alternative to just uh, go to a site like Congregate uh, that will upload the game for you. Um, and uh, you can also have ads on it or something, I'm pretty sure, uh, but they will take a piece of the cake then. Um, but yeah, they then uh, people can go there to their site and play your game. So in, in that case, you're just going to be needing the Unity 3D file. In our case, we're going to be needing both. Right now, we can double click on this uh, Unity web player thing. And if you have the plugin, just select run now. And it will load up and it works. So now we are playing in the browser. And that's already really awesome. 
Uh, but what we will do is we will make sure to uh, throw other people a link to this. The problem right now is that you might be saying, well, it's on the internet, it's in the browser. It's not really. If you give this link up here to anyone, uh, it's not gonna work because this is just a file path to the local file on your system. So what we're gonna do instead of we, is we're gonna uh, install Dropbox. If you haven't already, just go to dropbox.com, install it. An account is free and you have, I think it's five gigabytes. It might only be two. I can't remember. You have a couple of gigs for free um, and it works really well. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and open up my Dropbox folder here. Once you've installed it, of course. And let's just um, find the folder called public. In my case, I've deleted it. It should be there when you first install Dropbox. But then you can just go ahead and say new folder and just make one, just public. There you go. Double click that and it's important that you do this inside the public folder. And then simply drag our Pong web build folder into this. Right click on it. Uh, of course, we're just going to wait for it to sync up. And now it has with the check mark there. Right, uh, now we're going to double click on that and then right click uh, on the uh, HTML file. And we're going to say copy public link. And that was basically it. So now if we open up a browser here and paste in this link and you can do this to all your friends, uh, it will run the HTML file and you can say run now and the game will play from the Dropbox server. And if you're wondering if there's gonna be lag on the game itself, it is not because the game is locally run. So this is just a fine alternative. If you don't wanna go through all of the hosting stuff, it works. And uh, I think that Dropbox will keep on supporting this functionality, hopefully. So thanks for watching. And uh, that pretty much concludes this series. So. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave suggesting, suggestions for what you want to do next. Many people have asked me whether or not the survival game uh, tutorial series is completely uh, scratched, but it uh, it's not. I uh, will continue with it at some point. Um, I have some things I, I want to do. But there's just been so much and um, there's been much more demand for other tutorials. So I don't know if that's what I'm going to uh, continue with now. Uh, we'll have to see. Um, I'm also working on some interesting stuff for the Make a Game tutorial. I'm not going to tell you anything about it specifically uh, because it's not totally planned out. Uh, and I would love to do something like a uh, 2D platform uh, tutorial. Uh, at some point because I, I'm pretty much in love with the 2D tools. So uh, that's going to be interesting. We have some GUI soon coming out from Unity. Uh, so that's going to be really awesome. Been looking forward to that for like, yeah, <laughs> years. And um, I'm definitely going to do something on that. Uh, and uh, yeah, Unity 5 has been announced. So also much stuff there to cover. So yeah, it's going to be a busy time. So thanks for watching this video and, uh, and the, the series in general. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you in the next video.